absolutely adored him. Adored him. My full family, my brother Peter, loved him. He loved him. We loved him from the bottom of my heart. He was everything to it. Everything. The only enemies I ever knew him to have were the Sears. The fallout came in Madison's nightclub when he went to hit Michael. Phone calls constantly. They're going to get shot tonight. He's getting shot. His Jewies are getting shot. He always used to think he would be, like, he would die before he was 40. And like he used to say to me, and I used to say, oh, stop being silly, ma'am. I do say silly things like that. They've said, I'll go down to the pubs to check with it being New Year's Eve, that things was quiet. And then I got a phone call and said, um, I know they've been shot. I remember the policeman saying, you'll be okay, you'll be okay. He's too strong, he's too tall, would never do anything to him. But it wasn't a two, two was it? Oh, it was a three, five, seven magnet. With the statement, what glove I made, I'd seen all that. <laughs> seen that Michael Sears had shot with Graham. i seen all that. And the police said that they looked like there would be arrests. I went, I went to his house and he swore on the Bible. And then he said to me, so is that okay? Are we friends now? I said, well, he was only 34 years old when they shot him down. 34, with his children, his one son buried on top of him, his father. Rest in peace, it's, 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 oh, it's so shocking. Guys, welcome back to Care Room TV. Today, delighted to be up north in Newcastle with the much anticipated interview with the lovely Anna Connolly. Anna, how are we doing? Fine. So, thank you very much, um, obviously, for giving me the opportunity. And uh, so to start with, obviously, we did the thing about two and a half months ago, I guess, where you were off camera. And obviously, what was the response like for you from that? Obviously, I've got tons of messages myself oh, talking about how highly. Tons about of you. messages. All lovely messages, all very nice messages. It was ni nice comments. Lots of encouragement. Lots of encouragement. Lots of support. That's good. And obviously lots of people have been on my case since then to obviously get you yeah. back on, to get you on camera this time. They've yeah. been uh, really looking forward to it. So, uh, yes, yeah, let's, let's get into this. So, um, I think only we right and go back to the start of your story, Anna. So talk to me about um, sort of growing up. You always in Newcastle. Big yeah, family. Yeah. yeah, big family, five brothers, three girls, lived in Daisy Hill in the council estate. Um, as you know, Catholic religion, um, quite quite staunch Catholic religion with my mum um, as we grew up. Went to the girls' school, Catholic school, my brothers went to the boys' school. My priest was absolutely wonderful. Father Connolly um, had horses nice. and dogs and chickens and geese had every kind of animal you can think of. And it was at the stables down here in Daisy Hill and got my first horse when I was 13, the Palomino. Very nice. Yeah. Um, so you had a happy childhood, like a oh, great childhood. greatest childhood I could ever ask for. Absolutely fantastic. An amazing mum and dad that loved us so much. We didn't have a lot, but we had lots of love. Of Loads of love. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's what it's all about, isn't it? More yeah, important yeah. than material stuff. Yep. And so did you do well at school? No, nah, nah. Weren't interested in school? Nah, wasn't interested. No. Just wasn't interested. <laughs> you laugh now when I see this. Like I used to think, I remember like thinking when they used to see the wheel was round, and I was thinking air couldn't possibly be round. It's flat. It's flat. Like how could the water hang on a ball? And I don't think I'm travelling at so many thousand miles an hour. You know, I I wasn't the brightest person, but I yet like I couldn't stick in. I just didn't like school. I was more interested in animals and. In my school that was over there, the stables was right next door. So I used to dicky off the playtime and go straight to the stables, get my horse, jump on the horse and drive it across, drive it right across to the school nice. and, give little, and give everybody rides on the horse. <laughs> and then the teachers would come out and say, there's Zana, 
And again, she's whacked off the school. She's riding horses all over the playground. You know, I, I did. And so I you're quite mischievous? Is it? Oh, Sorry. dead mischievous. I went to school, 20 dogs came with us. Because when I was young, nobody, like, didn't matter, like, dogs were just let in the streets and dogs used to roam everywhere. Where it's not allowed now. But when I was young, oh, every, everybody's dog in Daisy Hill knew me and the followed us. I was like the Pied Piper, nice. all the dogs behind. So did you ever get in trouble as a child, or was it just fun stuff? Did you ever get arrested oh, no, or anything no, like this? Oh, no, never, ever. No. What? God. Well, I don't know. It might be my mom, something small. My mum, she never ever said, I'll get the priest. She used to say, that's it. You're getting talked to the priest. You're getting talked to them. She said, the priest, God, used to die. Not the priest, not the priest, ma, because he used to come every Sunday morning yeah. to collect a little packet of the money in yeah. every Sunday. Never ever got in trouble in ever in my life. Did and later on in my life I did. Of course. Was there um were you ever around sort of criminality when you were growing up Never as a child? Ever. There wasn't criminals Never. in your family or anything like Never this? Never ever. So no. you, you all your family are sort of law abiding. Five brothers all worked hard, my oldest brother, seventy five, had his own business, my next brother had his own business, next one were twins, Michael and Jimmy. Michael did. Jimmy was a little bit of a little my brother Jim Bob, but he was a little bit of a uh, went to jail, well, Borsal. But after that, he was good. Yeah. He was good. Learn, Peter, uh, Peter once went to jail okay. for fighting. For fighting in the no, no no yeah, Nothing, right, but anything worse than that. And so, talk to me about when you left school. What did you get into work or anything like this? Straight away, when I was 15, I left school and I worked at Bill Smarties in High Heaton. Is um, when they just learn you how to. Temporary, what are they? I forgot what I was. When you go as a temporary secretary. Okay, yeah. Temp well, I wasn't a secretary. Yeah. Don't dare put that in. Apprenticeship. <laughs> yeah. I was just, uh, I was 15 and it was like you had to say, sort all that paperwork yeah, yeah. and the envelopes okay. and all that. And then I left that. And uh, when I got this 17, 18, I went into care. Okay. And then I worked at uh, St. Nicholas's Hospital and uh, Hunter's Moor. And I was in Hunter's Moor for five years. Then I left there. And then I went into the AMI home for elderly, mentally infirm. And then I went to Sunnycrest Hostel. Okay. Where it was adolescents who had problems. And I worked there until I fell pregnant with my children. And um, then after that, I went into the pub trade. Okay, nice. Well, you become a landlady or something? Yeah, of my family's pub. Okay, so... Um so you had ch children then, and yeah. then this was all prior to meeting Viv? And stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you had children, and how many children did you have at that point? Two. You had two children, and then, unfortunately, obviously, their marriage split up at a certain point, did yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it ended. It split uh, up. And then... Um, when the children were pretty young, Dominique was one, and Georgia was two, and we split up. Was it sort of as amicable split up as it could be, or was it, did it end up in... And it wasn't quite nice at first. Yeah. But then it was okay afterwards. Yes, yeah, so I'm sure it was a struggle initially, just looking yeah. after two children on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, what, a couple of years down the line, you ended up meeting Viv down the line, did you? No, I met Viv then. Then, you met Viv then. Dominique was one. Okay. I met Viv then. Uh -huh. So, how did you meet Viv? Because um, we had, uh, he was looking after a pub on Shields Road. And um, we went in with my sisters and that, and I wasn't with my partner then. And he asked us to take us for a drink, and, and I wouldn't go because I was a little bit scared. Of? Oh. Just scared. <laughs> I wasn't, I hadn't really had, like, lads and things. For and, a long time? You know, well, not for a long time. Well, no. since before. No, like, had, after I had... Um, you had to be caught in or whatever you did in I had, like, like, kids, like I just wasn't that kind of person that um, would just think, oh, yeah, I'm coming. So, anyway... Did like, you know uh, who Viv was by reputation prior <laughs> to this? No, I never you had You never heard of him when no, I met him. he didn't have a reputation when I met him. But he was um, already running doors or... Oh, he was already running doors, yeah. But I never knew who, who yeah, he was. Yeah, you were away from that. Well, I right. was away. I just knew... He like looks after the doors, and when we went in, he would get all the drink and all my friends and my family, and then we would go over to the town, and my family, my cousins, owned the restaurant Dawn Loudon in um, Ross, San 
but I can't think of the name of it in the big market. I forgot now. Yeah. Anyway, we used to go over there, and um, and then just from there. And Start dating courting. Started and dating, yeah, yeah. And um, so what was it like to describe the initial period? Obviously, was it head over heels, like straight away, or what? And oh, no, it wasn't head over heels. And how old were you at this point, and how old was Viv? 20, 24. You were 24, and Viv was? 24, Were you both the same age? Yeah, yeah. Both the same age, okay. Yeah. And um, so you obviously dating for... Mums and eventually did you end up moving in together or anything? Oh, we, we moved in, like, we were together for about, um, but I had left my partner and I had get in the house back next to me man and then they would come all the time, like nearly every day, Yeah. every day. And then, because it wasn't like just straight away, because I, I used to think, oh, you never believe people, like, they would tell you that they were on their own and blah, blah, but anyway, after that, we moved in together, and then from then, um, we bought a house on Apple Tree Gardens. Nice. And um, so, what was Viv like then? Was he a proper gentleman at them times? And oh, he was absolutely amazing. And your family, lo family loved him? And absolutely adored him. Adored him. My full family, my brother Peter, loved him. He loved him. We loved him from the bottom of our hearts. He was everything to it, everything. Mm. And so as you obviously started to get to know Viv a lot more and stuff, and so you obviously understood his life a bit more, was he involved in any sort of criminality at any sort of points there that you knew of? Or was not what I knew of. Like, just running doors? No, not just running doors. Like you had to, like, people would come to him, businessmen, to ask, like, just pretend, um, say you had work done on your house and you didn't pay the people who'd done the work. Like that person, debt collecting like sort of debt, stuff. yeah, yeah, and then come to Viv and ask Viv, could he collect the money from him? And he would get, he would get it, something mm. too, and like, things like that. He would do that. And because he did go to jail at one point, didn't he? Was it before yeah, you were with he him, went or was jail. it at, while you were with him at those times? <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So he went to jail. What did he go to jail for? Oh, when he had a fight with uh, Stewie Watson and Hobos. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, Obviously, at the time, you're saying that Viv wasn't a uh, criminal, but was he sort of, he was a renowned tough man, wasn't he? Yeah. And so, yeah. He, and was he, his reputation quite a big thing to him? So, like, would he want to be fighting other people who thought that they were this or no, that? Or he, no, he wasn't interested no, in that wasn't rubbish? wasn't like that. No, wasn't interested in that rubbish. No. But at the time, when he sort of ran the doors back then, um, it was a different time from today, and it was like the doors were... A trade that was much more sort of always intertwined with criminality, wasn't it? And yeah. sort of the hard main criminals who used to run the doors. So, did he have enemies from running the doors or people that were trying to oh, compete yeah, in the enemies. doors? And, mm -hmm. and so, who were his enemies? Did you know what these were back then, or was it dangerous, or was it just not anything that he was worried about? Well, the only um, enemies I ever knew him to have were the Sears. And so obviously he was like friends he, with them at one point, wasn't he, prior to this, wasn't he? And yeah. he used to work, well, did he do some he debt collecting? He did Did he no, do no, debt collecting no, for them or nothing? Like, debt they collecting. didn't use him as a heavy. Oh. No, no, no. No? Them, them moved in under Viv. Them did. He didn't ever go to them to ask any of them for anything. Never. No, I didn't hear that. I heard they came to him to try and use him as muscle. Yeah, they did. And they used yeah, him they for did. a little bit. Yeah, they and did. And in the end when he came out of jail, he fucked him off. It wasn't yeah. interest anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that's maybe where yeah, when they, they saw that, him mm -hmm. as he was upset. We had just came off our holidays when that carry on with Stuart Watson had happened. And when we came off off our holidays, um, like their messages left on your phone and that and saying that um, Stuart Watson had been in Julie's nightclub and caused some farragus and hit some young lads and that. And that was Viv's job to say to Stuart Watson. So, as far as I could gather, after our holiday, Viv hadn't seen Stewie Watson. But that night, he, he bumped into the Siazis. I don't know how that did happen, because Viv was never really good friends with the Siaz. Not ever. Not mm. ever. And, um, and then after that, Viv got, when Viv got locked up, I can't remember. I can't remember what year was the year when um, 
me and Viv went to Stuart Watson's house on Venture Bank in St Stuart. In St Stuart, Stewie came to our house too and to see Viv to shake hands and everything like that. But Stuart Watson knew what Viv was capable of. He knew what Viv was capable of. He knew he couldn't do anything with Viv. Anything. And I'm not um, thinking Viv was anybody special or he was the hardest ever. There was probably lots of people as hard as Viv, but not in the North East there wasn't. Mm. Not in the North East there wasn't. No one. I didn't know no one mm. who could do anything with him. So you never came to... Did you end up ever losing any fights or anything like while you were with him? Not what I knew of. Was he fighting regularly though? Well, he did have a few because people would have to come and give him money, like say, to go and get these people. Yeah. And like, I remember once going with my brother Peter and it was in North Shears. And I didn't use leg like fighting me. I, I was a bit scaredish. So anyway, we, we go with my pals outside this club. And I said, oh, what's going on? What's happening? Yeah, I hope there's no fighting. And they went, no, no, no. And him and Peter goes in this club. I'm sitting right outside in the car. And then, anyway, these three, three big guys come out. And I mean big guys, like six foot, like that. Yeah. Because Viv wasn't six foot, he was five foot eleven. Six foot wide. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was big at the top and yeah. slim at the hips. That's what I used to say. I like, used to watch the cowboy fill in the hackets. Yeah. Big at the top and slam at the hips. <laughs> anyway, they came out and I looked and I thought, ooh, I think there may be a fight, yeah. So I kind of slid, slid myself down on the chair because I thought, I'm not looking at me. And I just slid a little bit and then I popped back up. And when I popped back up, the three of them are on the ground. And I thought, eh, that was quick. And Viv was picking them up, and oh, Peter was picking them up and sitting them onto the wall. Anyway, Viv shook their hands and that, and we went in and got, and I went, my God. I went, what the heck? What the heck happened there? I went, eee. I shut my eyes, and our oh, Peter went, I tell you not to blink. I tell you to keep your eyes open because you'd miss it, and I swear, I don't know which way you hit them, because I, I missed that bit because I shut my eyes. <laughs> and the three of them were on there, and they were like that. And then I used to think, God, Viv's really strong. And I used to watch him at the gym and what he could lift and that. And I just used to think that like, he was Superman. a really, oh, he was Superman. Viv was massive. Was he on, obviously goes without saying, you, I don't know if you'd know, obviously he was on steroids, I'm guessing. Yeah, he was. Yeah. But his father didn't agree with that. Of course. His father didn't. But his father knew Viv was capable when he was 13 and a half stone. He could... He could do the same fight then. He, didn't he was a good boxer, to... wasn't he? Yeah, he was a good boxer. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. He but... didn't have to be that size, but he just felt like he needed to be that size because of the reputation that he ended up getting. But he could do whether he was 20 stone. Yeah, it's very addictive 15, as well. Like, you know, yeah. everyone wants to look better, and once you start getting into that gym sort of mindset, yeah. you want to get bigger and bigger uh -huh. and bigger, don't you? Mm -hmm. So I can understand. I've taken steroids myself mm -hmm. in the past. Um, of course, you can't tell now. But. Um, and so what about like the side effects? Did he ever uh, have anger issues from taking the steroids? Or I used to have terrible anger issues. Oh, terrible anger. Smashing yeah, stuff up all yeah. the time like a child. Oh, yeah. He would punch holes through doors. doors. Doors, he replaced doors nearly every week. But never like never, harmed anyone like me. Never got physical me. With Never, you. ever, ever. Uh, more like me getting physical with him. More like me. What he's misbehaving. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so was there any sort of like major trouble that Viv got in where he was unstuck, where he was scared of any individuals or what about this or that or got involved with some serious gangsters or they got in a little bit over his head Never like, ever. kept in his debts? Never or... ever. Viv was always on his own. Everywhere he went, he went on his own. And if he did have a friend in years back, it would be Rob Armstrong. Oh, he would come around with him, but he never ever went in any bars with big gangs of lads behind him. Like, like what happened at Hobo's, that was just a one-off. They've never, ever, ever done that. Mm. Never walked around and went into pubs with the Sears family or anyone to terrorise people. 
Never ever. Mm. That's the first time I've ever heard of it. And if Stewie Watson and other folk tell the truth, them might say them should say the same as me. I don't know. I wasn't with him twenty four seven. What he's done might not have told me everything. I'm just saying what I knew. I never knew him to do that. And so, like I said, at a certain point he was obviously you say he wasn't close to the says, but he was cool with them on all right terms. And at a certain point there was a fallout. But where did the fallout come from, and why did he fall out with the says? The fallout came um, in Madison's nightclub when he went to hit Michael, says. Why did he go to hit Michael? I can't really remember what that argument was about when he went to hit Michael. I can't really remember. And then after that, um, that was it. The says like, Michael and them left, whoever they were with. It was a lot of years ago to actually remember everything, yep. Christian, um, and then that was the fall of And from there they were enemies? Were enemies. Mm -hmm. And, um... When Viv... I would say when Viv went to jail, they were kind of dark to be enemies. Yeah, when yeah, because... When he came out Paddy said by the time he came out of jail, he had no more to do with nah, them. Nah, he didn't have anything to do with them. And he was locked up. I'm sure John Henry was in jail at the same time, and... Um, I think Viv just realised, like, they weren't the type of people he wanted to be around. And I didn't want them around them, neither. Was there any sort of back and forth then between Sayers and Viv? What, what happened? Was there any... Not after that, there wasn't. No. And not after he came out of jail, there wasn't. And what about um, Paddy? Was Paddy a name in town at those times, but then? Paddy was never ever around. I never ever seen Paddy in but the town. Did you had his name or anything like this? Was Paddy sort of infamous or renowned at those times? Oh, I heard of Paddy Conroy. And, Viv and never, Michael Conroy. Viv never mentioned him or anything like this. He yeah. never had any dealings with them or came across them. He had a few dealings with Michael Conroy, but never, not what I knew of, of Paddy. And so Michael, he was a dangerous character, was he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He could have a fight too. And so did Viv have problems with him, did he? Or? Mm, Viv had a fight with, with Michael Conroy. And did he obviously won the fight? Yeah, he, he won the fight. And then afterwards, did they shake hands and it sort of get left then? Or did he mm, think that there was just got left then, yeah, yeah. So Viv obviously he wasn't really scared of anyone, especially being on the doors. He was there on the doors, he had no the one. firm, he wasn't running away from any sort of situation, no, whatever be. Be. And. Um, so obviously leading up to, um, obviously when Viv got killed, um, did, did he know that his life was in danger or anything like this? Oh, leading always, up? constantly. But never, he wasn't worried still? No, nah, no. Nah. There's got like phone a calls, different enemy every week. Phone calls constantly, Viv's going to get shot tonight, Viv's getting shot, his twoies are getting shot, his are getting shot. That went on all the time, that. And then one night I had just left, and him and um, Rob Armstrong was still in the town, and I had gone home, and then a car came into the town and shot them. That was outside of, um, oh, I never can think of the names. Tuxedo Junction, I think. And Rob Armstrong was his sort of best friend. Yeah, yeah, very best friend. And so did he get shot badly then, or? Rob, Rob Armstrong got lots of bullets. Did like, Them little things. Yeah, yeah, the shotgun bullets shot all over yeah, him. Yeah. And, um, they didn't get any, but Rob Armstrong did. And so at that point there, you knew it was sort of yeah, kind of yeah. serious thing. Did, yeah. And did Viv, Viv ever talk to you about who he thought that these might be? Or who did they think shot Rob? Or did that person get caught? Oh, they didn't get caught. But they knew there were people from the West End. And so did Viv know who it was? Yeah. Did, and was he looking to go back then or was he looking to peace? I know him? who it was too. But I'm not going to say that name. The person is uh, is died now. Okay. Rest his soul. Um, I won't say that name because um, there's family members, like in with certain families, and I won't say that there's name. There's no point, there's no, it's uh, he, uh, not yet anyway. Sometimes, the, 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 the Viv, and, uh, Viv and Rob knew exactly who it was, who okay. done that. Did they get any sort of payback they managed to? Um, I don't think they've got any payback. No. And so what about um, Lee Duffy and Brian Cockrell? Did Viv have anything to do with them? Were they names? Did they ever come around? Or did you ever hear him mention them? Well, not Brian Cockrell. I never, ever heard of his name. 
um, and Lee Duffy, I did. Yeah. Lee Duffy, I did because people used to say, if, that, well, if people look into the house or they reckon um, the shares have got Lee Duffy to uh, come and see the Viv. Viv wasn't cared, not one iota, not one. So, yeah, where Viv had such a reputation, they, they, there was obviously the talk, yeah, this is someone that could challenge Viv. And, and there had been lots of people at the house before, but had all the windows blasted out when all my children, my, when my children were on bed. Nobody seemed to care then. Like when people say, oh, the gangsters rule is you don't go to the house where children are. They didn't care when they came to my house. They didn't care when they uh, shot all the windows out, my uh, children were on bed. So this was all prior to obviously Viv. No, uh, this was then when Viv, at the time Viv, Viv was, was in the right. house yeah, when well, they shot all the windows out. And so obviously Viv can't let these things go. Obviously he must have done stuff back to them after this sort of stuff. He's a man, he doesn't care. Yeah, yeah, not. well... It, they did kind of uh, find out who it was, and it was like a, a stupid carry on that had happened in Julie's nightclub. And they did find out who it was. I don't know what he ever done to them. Maybe if they watch him, they might pipe up and say what he done to them. But mm. I don't know. But they shot all my windows out. And so obviously, we know Viv was a very tough man, very strong man. Mm -hmm. But obviously, uh, when you're competing against people with guns and weapons and stuff like this, was would Viv ever have weapons? No, did you ever see weapons around never, you? Never, never, ever. You never had guns or anything like this? Never, didn't like guns, didn't like names. If you seen them, he would act silly and like go, boo, like but that. Did he not like, realise that he'd be, um, it's even worse sort of, you know, for the hard men and the known fighters and stuff like this, like, when you're in war with these sort of people, you know you can't compete with them on a fist-to-fist -fist basis, yeah. uh -huh. and especially when they're so strong and ferocious and people are so fearful and this. People, was he ever worried about the people? Never ever. Lots of times he had knives pulled on him. Didn't didn't bother him. Not so did he get hurt lots of times? Was frequently no, never ever. Did he get put in the hospital ever. much or nothing like this? Never and... ever got hurt. Never ever. No. And um, what about you? So obviously mentioned he was on steroids. Was he involved in that selling steroids or anything like this? Or well, just before he died, he had a, an abscess. And it was infected and it had to be healed from like the inside out. Yeah, yeah, no, terrible. It, and it was through the injection. injection. And his father wasn't very happy about that and told him that not like not to take not like he used to listen to his dad on everything his dad said. Anyway, he had an abscess and he had to go to the hospital for it, for to clean the wound on the inside out. And his next hospital appointment was on the fourth of January. But he had died by then, so mm. that killed him by then. So we I never knew what what did they find in his blood or anything like that. Yeah, no, it's just easy for dodgy uh, steroids that can cause problems. Didn't take problem. them off. It wasn't like a thing he took often. I think at first it was uh, like tablets, That's and then his time, his time yeah, yeah, went on, and then I think. Probably been there, like everyone again, has. injection every week or something. I got a fortnight. I don't really know. And what about um, drinking drugs? Would you be taking ever smoking weed no, or taking no, no, cocaine? Never smoked or ever in his life. Would you big drinker or anything like this? No, nah, no. He drank Guinness with a touch of lemonade or Perry water. No, nah, he didn't drink. He, was he didn't just, smoke. He didn't take drugs. His health was his drug, and he liked being big yeah. and strong. Being big and strong. And was he in the gym every day, obviously? Every day, three times a day. Fucking every yeah. day, yeah. Did he ever compete in bodybuilding Webb. stuff or anything like this? Compete? No, no, no. But his friend did, Andy Webb did. Yeah. He did, and that's where he trained in Andy's gym. Mm. And so, um, leading up to just prior to the time before Viv got killed, did he know his life was it especially in any more danger at that point, or was it just usual sort of stuff? He always used to think he would be. Like he would die before he was 40, and like he used to say to me, and I used to say, Oh, stop being silly, man. I do say silly things like that. And he used to say, I oh, will, I bet you yeah, I will be dead by 40. And if I used to drive the car, and that he used to say, And I'd be careful if motorbikes come up beside you because we've got phone calls that often, like, like you, you're going to get shot, and that you'd get shot. So it was a thing that stayed. Did the police ever give him any warnings or anything? Because I know nowadays they. No, no. 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 And so, was leading up to it, it was just danger. There's always threats and all this, but he didn't care and he just went about his business. He was still working every day yeah. on his own, lone soldier. Yeah, yeah. 
And so, obviously, I know it'd be difficult, but talk to me about the sort of the night he died then, or and your memories of what happened. Or, well, it was New Year's Eve. Yeah. And um, I had all my clothes ready on the bed. The kids were getting looked after. They were getting dropped off at six o'clock. The kids got dropped off at six o'clock. I was in the house getting everything ready. They've said, I'll go down to the pubs to check. With it being New Year's Eve, that thing was quiet. The phone kept ringing in, asking if he was there. And then seeing he's getting shot, and I thought, mm hmm. But I didn't kind of worry because I thought, oh, well, we've had that lots of times. Did you know he was calling you at that time? No, no. Yeah. And then Viv rang and he said, have you had any phone calls saying that I'm getting shot? And then I said, yes. I went, aye, you about two, have you? He said, yeah. He says, I won't be long, right? I'm waiting the shop now because he's going for the dog food and that. And I said, right, okay. And then I got a phone call and said, um, I know if it's been shot. And I said, it couldn't possibly be. He's just bought of his, he couldn't possibly be. And he said, he has. And he said, we'll, we'll come and get you straight away. And his friend came, uh, Bobber, and he come and took us straight to the... Uh, the Soon. Was then uh, raking in off shoes. Yeah. And I got there before the ambulance did. And when I got there, the police were there. And the police, police were like, called that me, and then he came in. And I just looked at him, and he was still alive. And I was screaming, screaming. And then. He said, stop crying. <laughs> and then his mum and his dad and that came. Mm. And then... Did he say who it was or anything like this? No, he never. And then uh, I remember the policeman saying, he'll be OK, he'll be OK. He's too strong, he too, too would never do anything to him. But it wasn't a too, too, was it? Oh, it was a three, five, seven magnet. Yeah. And the doctor said it was a hole that size in his back. He couldn't mm -hmm. have um, ever survived. And so they tried to operate Sorry. on him. No, don't. Uh, they tried to operate on him and obviously, unfortunately... They said they'd give him 30 pints of blood. But they couldn't stop him. And then they took me and his dad in the room and I said, oh, well, sorry, it's time when he died. Horrific. Oh, horrific. So it goes without saying, obviously, you must have been in absolute pieces um, during that time. Did you go to stay oh, with family or anything yeah. like this, or your family come All stay with you? All my family stayed with me. All my family stayed with me. And so what in for a long, long time. What in terms of the police, like immediately though, what police were they saying? Police were say? there for a long time. A uh, policewoman kind of moved in we were for a year. And did they say they had any suspects or anything like this yeah, at the time? Yeah, I, they... I knew all about that with the, um, with the statement what Glover made. I'd seen all that. Seeing that Michael Sears had shot with Graham. I'd seen all that. And the police said that it looked like there would be arrests. And then the next thing said that um, Glover, his, couldn't, his statement couldn't be like taking to the court anything because um, he was in a street jacket. He was and that kind of, uh, uh, he couldn't take that evidence. Yeah, so, he was completely incredible. Yeah. And did you think that uh, it was uh, Michael, you agreed with what? Sorry? Did you think it was Michael Sayers who'd done it at the time or? Well, they said it was, yeah. And so you sort of taken a... Uh, yeah, I believe that. It was a Sayers, yeah. So and I went to Stephen Sears' house. But that was quite a bit down the line. So talk yeah. to me about initially, obviously, you had the police with you at the time. Did you think that, well, they, I was, did uh, you think that they were going to solve it? And did you think they were being yeah, supportive? Yeah, really, and you I said did, you became yeah. close with the yeah, police really lady, did. didn't you? I thought they would. And, but I was on so much medication then. I can imagine. For a long, long time. I can imagine, yeah. So I never really... I can't ask them things I can't remember because... I just kind of remember any of that part. Getting through the day-to-day -day basis for the kids and died, all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I can't remember any of that. And so obviously, after say six months or something like this, you must have been thinking like, why has these people not been arrested yet? Why has 
there must have been at that point there where you're thinking, what's taking so long? Was there, or did you think it was screwed up because they'd explained to you because Glover's not credible, we can't put him in court because he's a At the time I had every trust in the police. Yes. I believed everything they said and I believed they would get them and them also said at the time who it was that it was kind of them. That's, they, um, they interviewed plenty of people and as far as I gather and the the full scenario was around them. There was no one you No other suspects. In. No yeah. other sub suspects. And in terms of rumours and stuff, I'm sure that obviously it's one of the most infamous things that have, horrible things that have happened and talking about rumours, there must have been rumoured people there must there be millions, rumors, yeah, yeah, millions of people in your ears. Yeah, there was lots of rumours and lots of other names like John Paul Hale, Lee Watson, lots of names. Um, so you never really knew then and who did do so it. So at this so point you were getting confused. It was just and so loads of names in your head and was it this one, was it that one, who was it? So then I decided to um, I would go, go to Sia's house and just ask on my own. And I thought, well then I was carrying my Bible around with his heart at that time. Yep. And uh, I thought, oh, I'll just go. So I did. And I asked him. And he put his hand on the Bible and he said, no way. We loved Viv. My father loved Viv. We've got a big picture above the fireplace. And Viv, whether he's telling the truth, I don't know. I, I believe him then, though. And I said, OK. That's all, I, I, that's all I wanted to ask. And it's not like, even if you did kill him, and you said you did, I, you, what could I do? I could, what, what could I do if I ran to the police and said, uh, he said he did kill him? That would mean nothing. You just said you didn't say that to me. Of course. But, oh, Sky. Sky. No, no, it's all good. But all I, I wanted was just me to look into their face to see, did you kill him? And so obviously you're a, a God-fearing person, so when someone swears in the Bible, you took them at their word at the time there. I truly did. If you said to me now, I know you swear in the Bible, that's true. I, I wouldn't dare lie. I just wouldn't dare lie. You can only, do that, with, you can only do that with a God fearing person, can't you? Uh -huh. I just wouldn't lie. I would just and prefer so that, to at see. That, at that point there, that put a lot of your. What, I would just to bed, prefer to, to see. I don't, I, I don't want to swear in the Bible. You should have said that then. Um, I didn't, I didn't, and I don't really want to swear in the Bible. And the reason why I'd done that, Christian, was because I knew he was a Catholic and yeah. I knew he went to a boys' school, a Catholic school, St. Cuthbert's and St. Mary's. I knew that. So I really thought that everybody was brought up like me in the Catholic religion. I thought you, you stand by the Ten Commandments. No, it's I great thought, that you're uh, but I like thought that well. in yourself. But, yeah, unfortunately, I went to a Catholic boys' school. Unfortunately, uh, you can't trust everyone in it. He's so trusted. Uh, oh, it's, good that that you're that, it's good that you're that way. Yeah, yeah. And so after that, um, I know there were some pictures of you and the Sayers. Was it at a party or a New yes, Year's Eve? Yes, that was my birthday party. And so after that, you this put it's everything to bed and you thought everything was all right. So did you socialise with them? Or no, was I didn't one think of... everything was all right. I didn't think everything was all right. I went I went to his house and he swore on the Bible. And then he said to me, so is that okay? Are we friends now? I said, well... You swore on the Bible. I said, yeah, okay. Anyway, and away I went. And then my party was like weeks after that, but before that, before that, the, the, the burnt the pub down. It got burnt down. Someone did. I don't know. Some, anyway, the, the burnt it down. And you didn't and have any people, enemies or anything like this? I've... I didn't have any enemies. No. Um, and then it was my sister's pub and her husband's. Uh, Crockett's uh, hotel and those people upstairs and I, I, I was running it at the time and I locked the pub up and I came along to come home and I just got home when I got a phone call of the police and the fire brigade they said come back the pub's a fire and when I got back it was a blaze a blaze a blaze burnt the smithereens anyway it took months to get it all done up, ready for my birthday on the 1st of September. And uh, was my birthday on the 1st of September and the bar was all brand new and lovely. And um, me, me nephew, 
Paul came in with Stephen. And, uh, so was he friends with him, was he? My, my, my nephew Paul was. Oh, most of my other nephews are good friends with him. Yeah. My brother's children who live in High Heaton were good friends with their children. Yeah. And that's how they met them. We didn't tell. Our children weren't brought up to be told what had happened about Viv and whose names were mentioned. We didn't tell our children that, so our children just got brought up yeah. with them, not, not known so until they really grew up. Of course. So on this party, and obviously they've come in, at that point there, uh, who do you think of the burnt down pub? Did you, who did you think at that point? Well, you didn't have a clue, or you, did you have suspects? When they came. Yeah, so prior to that, who did you think had burnt down the place? Well, there was there was different names in as well. So you couldn't put it on to anyone you didn't you know? You couldn't, uh, there was different names. And, and so then when uh, Stephen came to the party, you didn't have any issue, everything was fine, he'd sworn on the Bible previously, he yeah, came yeah, along with your cousin, yeah, that was yeah. all. Yeah, but... Um, he knew, they knew a lot of people at my party too anyway, so it wasn't like they sat with me, uh, they, they kind of mingled yeah. around him. I seen them like a few times, maybe that night, and then that was that, and I didn't really see him again after that. And how long had this been from Viv dying roughly, a year or down the line or two down the line? No, no, no. no. Viv died when he was 34, I was 50 then. You were 50, so, so this was 15 years after, a long yeah, time after. Yeah, and so yeah. by this point here, 15 years after, you didn't, did you think there's any hope of getting the murder solved at this point here, or you just completely lost hope with the police? And I just completely lost faith and hope anyway, because the police came back a couple of times to see there was new um, kind of evidence, but it never came to anything. It never came to anything, and they... That was it. And so at this point now, do you think the police, obviously it's a stupid question, completely let you down and the yeah, rest yeah. of his family? Oh yes, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and completely. Do you think um, it was corruption that was behind that? Yeah, I do now. I didn't then. I didn't know D.V. Glover was a, a police informant from 1989. And Keith Felton was his police officer when he was the chief murder. Inspector yeah. for Viv's murder. I didn't know any of that. Mm. And um, I didn't know them people. I did. I did. I heard of them. I heard of David Glover. See him. I, di I didn't know them, and never ever once said hello or spoke to any of them people. Of course. And so for you, over the years as well. Um, obviously, I know this is something that you've never got over. And then over the years, when you're getting books come out and to bring it all up and stuff like this, how difficult has this been for you? Oh, really over, difficult. Over every years. year, every year, every new year, the chronicle. They like just come and sometimes just opening your door and just coming in your door and no privacy and you did like oh hi hey, blah 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 what are you having how are you doing and all that all along with what journalists didn't even tell you who they were and before you knew it there was a big picture and a big story of loads of lies in the paper on the front page if I went to the shops and the posters outside would be a big picture on me and Viv and I used to hate it every year, I can imagine, every year. I can imagine. And what about over the sort of the and last... still now. Well, no, I was going to say, over the last couple of years, with all this sort of YouTube thing, and you've got Glover, Cookie, Paddy, the Sayers, Steve mm -hmm. Rake, all these people constantly going on about Viv, and it's sort of being spoken about more at the moment now than I'd say it's ever been oh, spoken yeah, about that I yeah. can remember. Yeah. Um, and so is this the reason why you decided to come out and talk? Because everyone's going on about these... All the time and put there. Well, something right that you get your it, side across. The, the reason why I came out and to talk about it because, like, when other people, I don't watch uh, YouTube, I'll go on that. I do now, I didn't then. And then when people are telling us things and saying, uh, they said they've done this, and I said, yeah. So then I start looking and I thought, that's a load of baloney. Viv went to this year's father's house and said, I don't get Lee Duffy on, and the father says, I'll ring Lee Duffy. That is the biggest load of rubbish I have ever heard in my entire life. Mm. That is pure lies, lies. They've never went to no John Sears' house 
and the two brothers came and rung Lee Duffy and Lee Duffy said, and Viv said, I don't want to fight you. He's getting on. He was getting on. He was in his prime. Viv was in his prime. He was only 34 years old when they shot him down. 34 with his children, I'm his sure. one son buried on top of him, his father. Rest in peace. It's, 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 oh, it's so shocking. No, no, they got 30 it... years of their lives when his son and his father were buried and they can sit there and cookie and say things and laugh like it's a joke. And like, rewrite like, history and stuff as well, like what the facts and all this sort of stuff, and they can all put their own, make up their own yeah, stories yeah. and that. It's so all made up it. stories and it's all about people who died, and they're not there just to get things right. So then people who are still here just say, oh, I've done this, I, I, I could say, I could say, oh, uh, you shouldn't Viv. I know that, I know Christian, that when you, last time I seen you, you did shouldn't Viv. I could see that, there's no chance to say you didn't. Of course. So that's what they're just doing. Okay, and so you know, um, at any point, I'm not an expert like murder inquiries in Scared. cases. Did, did, at any point, did um, the police say to you, did they ever close the case or was the case still open no, to no, this day? No, no, the case is still open to this day. And has there, have they ever come back to you like over recent no, years no, to say no, there's no, been developments uh, or anything? They did, like? they did, um, which was a long, lot of years ago. When they got a bit new evidence, they said, but nothing ever became of it, and then that was that. The, the, the murder case is still open. Mm. And so at this point now, do you, do you think you know who killed Viv, or do you think it was who originally suggested, or...? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, obviously, you, you want the same thing as you wanted then. You want justice, and you want it, yeah, to, be, I want justice. You want it to be solved. Yeah, I do. And so... Obviously, of all this cookie stuff and all this sort of stuff, and he's saying he'll take lie detectors and stuff like this. Do you want him to take lie detector? Yes, do you I think, do. Do you think Paddy could be involved? Do you want him to take lie yeah, detector? Yeah. And so what are your feelings towards Paddy? If, if, if anything, the two people, if I had my choice, who I would want them to take a lie test, I would be, which I can't, because David Glover is... Not right. Not right in the head. Him and Michael Sears, yeah. them two. And them two only. But, the but next, they won't do it. Next best thing, try and get anyone Paddy's willing to do it. I don't think Cookie will, but. No, Cookie won't either. And so, what do you. Um... But I would like to meet Cookie if you wanted to come, but you said no. But I will go. I will go and meet Cookie. I can I'll come meet with Cookie you. tomorrow. Yeah, maybe. I will. Well, you can say to him, I will. I'll come back and I'll take okay. you along I'll, to meet I'll, Cookie. I'll go and meet Cookie. Yeah, I'll, I'll take you along to meet him and that. Um, and meet all of them? He did want to meet, he did want to meet, that is, uh, before... Why don't we, me and you, we'll meet Cookie, we'll meet Stephen no uh, Reeve. No problem. Yeah, we'll meet, uh, we'll meet Atwood. And so what, what are your feelings towards Steve Rafe? I don't like him. Why? I just don't think he's a genuine man at all. And to be a bit one-sided. He's one-sided. He's all for the sales, which I don't care, be for who you like. Of course. But don't sit there and just tell Bearfield's lies. On the last party doing with Atwood, when they said, uh, so who killed Viv Green? No comment. Ha, 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 ha. What, 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 what was that all about? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's got no, it's no compassion. It's sort of no remember. compassion whatsoever. This isn't something you've got to open. No the, the lot of People whatsoever. might be a lot of years gone past, but... When the family are watching this, um, yeah, just people got to show a bit of compassion. It didn't happen to them, Christian. It happened to me. Mm -hmm. it didn't happen. He that one wasn't shot down with a magnet. Neither was Steve Rafe. Neither was Stephen or Michael or John. Yeah. But Viv was. Viv was. And I want just this. And so, what are your opinions on Glover as well? About. I think Glover has been a nasty past to me, mm -hmm. and he's passed. And he's passed. Yeah. And, and I think they all have. And I think it's only because they're older now and they're all in their 50s and over 50s. It's all, uh, up. we want to change our ways, we want to go straight. Well, I've went straight all my life since I was 15. I started school all my life. I don't need to change my ways. Mm. Them are the ones who do, not me. And um, what about uh, Brian Cockrell? He's done a few stories on Viv. Eey. It's all just bullshit that comes out of his mouth. Mm. Pure bullshit. So all he talks about is people who, who've already died, so they can't give the right comment back, so he can see what the heck he likes. Mm. I do like his wife, Emma. I think she she's nice. I, I don't. I don't think. I think 
he has all the say there anyway. Um, and I think she could be a Christian, but I don't think he is. He's not a Christian. Couldn't possibly be. He wouldn't want to talk about the things what he talks about every day. Every day he makes another part. When I done this fight with Lee Duffy, when I done this, when I done that. And Lee Duffy, he can just, that's all his pots are all about is people who died. And he done this. And he was the strongest man And like you say, ever. Viv never mentioned Brian. You'd never heard never, of Brian. Never Brian never was never Brian coming Cockrell. up to Newcastle. What yeah. I got told was, just even all that week, that Brian Cockrell, he run away from Viv. And that was a West End kid who said it. Yeah. West End as you. Brian Cockrell couldn't do nothing with it. Why didn't they get Brian Cockrell before they got Lee? Because they, they, they got Lee to do Viv, brought him. Why didn't they bring Lee to do Stewie Watson? Mm. Why did they use Viv when they always had Lee? So why didn't they get Lee? If he was the hardest, why didn't they get him? Why did, why did they use Viv? Mm. And so if you've got um, a message for all these people, whether it's Brian, whether it's Cookie, Glavo, Paddy, you constantly bring up Viv and stuff like this. Do you want people to be quiet and stop talking about Viv and just leave well, it to You want it. To, yeah. The one good thing is, you know where it's been spoken about so much that yeah. the mystery of it is greater today or is great today from the set than what it is then, which mm -hmm. obviously with the pressure and everything being spoken about, it puts a lot of pressure on the police to. It hasn't been forgotten yeah. about at all, has it? So. Well, I think I should go and see a solicitor because I feel like. Uh, it's just been left and it needs, I think, Cookie, everything he's been saying, it's just not good. Yeah. And he needs to take, a and I know, I know the test doesn't mean anything in this country. Yeah. And I know that you won't like get sent to jail or anything like that. But if that's the case, take the test. What are you scared for? You know, why, why does Cookie, is cookie think um, I'd be 75% I'll pass it 75%. 100% you need to be. That's a crazy thing to say, oh, isn't it? What, what crap was that? Crazy thing to say. That's crazy, like, crazy. Of... They won't take the test because I feel if you don't want to take it, you're guilty. Yeah, no. It's I, as plain as your nose on I your face. I told you this anyway. Yeah, but yeah. But we played along and I was more than willing to. Mm -hmm. I spoke to the lighter tech people, I had them all range, it's fine. They had yeah. the Newcastle offices. Um, it hasn't got to be on my channel, so this excuse about it uh, doesn't know me too well. It could have been on his channel. I was just facilitating it for you because yeah. you'd said he was willing to do it. Yeah, and what that's about... what he did see. He said it. Yeah, was he it... planted the seed. We didn't see it. He of said course. it. He would do it for Anna Connolly. Yeah. And what about your... Have you got a message to the police force? Who? The police force? I kind of think how... F to think how friendly... And I mean, really good friends that ended up with the police woman. Really good friends. Went to the house, stayed at the house, she moved away and that. Like, I couldn't believe that. They, they were all in on it and they all knew. They all knew, they had to know. When I think about the, the, the bungalow, the bungalow that main Viv went to buy was Stephen Craven's sons. And he wanted to save me and Viv wanted to buy it anyway. We looked at it, we didn't want it because we bought the house on Apple Tree. And then I seen Stephen Craven and his wife Anne, because he used to come to mine and Viv's house on Apple Tree Gardens to ask how the son was because Viv had kind of befriended him. And um, I said, Oh, Tony Leach is there in that property. He sold his house and he's renting that bungalow. And I didn't mean anything to me at the time, Viv was alive, it didn't mean anything to me. And then after Viv was murdered, and they came off the high street and they drove straight past my house on Apple Tree Gardens. And they went to the end of the street, they went up Benfield Road, under the bridge, they turned left. They went up there, it's an old people's home there now, but it was empty land. And then they turned right, they set the car fire there and they went into that bungalow. That's me. That's what I think. And do you know how many times I've done that journey, Christine? Oh, believe me. Me and my sister, a million times. We've drove, we've timed it, we've drove along, went along there, we've checked everything. That's all I've done for years. Drove the journey, drove under the bridge, looked at the house, knowing 
that was the house then went in. And that's how I feel like they got away me. Mm. That was the very house that they went in. So do you um, hold much hope that it, it, it will be solved and there will be justice in the case? I didn't in a, a while back, but I think now, yeah. With all the pressure and all Yeah, I think, yeah. Sort of I think up. something could become of this now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I just pray that you get justice and then you can get some of the closure. Like I said, I mean, you won't get yeah. over it at that point ever, something you'll never get over. Who I could would ever? love justice for Viv's family, for of his course. mother, he is Ill, his sons and his daughter and his sister. Yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, I pray that you get that justice and um, I'm sure you're going to get overwhelmed with support after coming on camera this time, especially after well, that last time. Hopefully, like. And as for yourself, this is just the start. Hopefully, you're not going anywhere. Hopefully, there'll be more videos. Maybe potentially, you can get your own YouTube yeah. channel going. Mm -hmm. And um, I know you were thinking that maybe there's a possibility back a book down the line. Yeah, because you have got mm -hmm. such an insane story that a short interview can't do it justice. And did, yeah. uh, Hopefully, bring even more light to the situation, won't it? And put yeah. even more pressure on. Yeah. So, um, I'd like to thank you very much for the opportunity to, to do this, Anna. And is there any, any sort of messages you want to give to anyone or anything, or anyone you want to say anything to? Or well, ask just like other folk who watch YouTube's and what do them think? Do them think these people who have been accused should take a test? Do they think I'm in the wrong? Should I not ask? I know nothing will come like with getting arrested by it, but it would just ease my soul and my heart and make make me feel a little bit better. And yeah, I mean, I, 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 obviously it's the least anyone can do if they're suspected. I don't hold much faith in these lie detectors. I don't think they're as sound as what... Neither so do I, I believe that people can fool them. I don't yeah. think these people can, like... Yeah, oh yeah, That's I think that. Clever people, like in yeah. six, there's yeah. they can be. And I think, it, I think if you've got money as well, like money pays, money does lots, money does, and if they pull money up, like people will lie and people of course. cheat the system any way they can. So even that you kind of trust. But mm. why not do it if they can cheat the system so much, like they cheat anything else? Try and well, do it. And especially with something as serious as this, they're going to do all they can to cheat the system, aren't they? So. Well, once I do that, Christian, I'm nearly done then. There's nothing I can do any more than um, ask this question, these two questions. Only that for Cookie. Well, I think, I think it's uh, when you've got all these people putting out this and that and putting out Viv's story where they're not in a yeah. position to with their yeah. own self-interest at heart, it's great to have someone putting Viv's side out there and yourself yeah. and then hopefully if we can get some justice along with that yeah. at the same time, mm -hmm. be great. But, um, it would have been amazing. I'd like to amazing. thank you very much uh, again for the opportunity, Anna. Thank and you And I hope you can do some more stuff down the line. Maybe yeah. I can help you with doing some videos for your own YouTube channel if you decide to do that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very and Guys, much. put some uh, support in the comments right now as well. So, thank you. Thank you. Bye.